and good morning. And uh, we are happy. Well, I'm not that happy to be back. <laughs> well, you're happy to be alive. I'm happy to be alive. I'm Howard left me you. a message because I, 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 like an idiot, had the worst timing and had to throw a party with the last possible minute. And Howard called me back and, dude, you sounded so content and happy. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah. I'm glad you're enjoying it, though. I really am. It sounds awesome. Well, Artie was uh, inviting me to his lovely new home, but I said, I'm not leaving my home to come to your home. <laughs> you have I was a lovely at Artie's new home, home twice. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Well, what's going on there? Well, what I went to that party that he threw, such mm-hmm. as it was. Right, right. whatever it was. <laughs> was there any food there? Um, there was food, but Artie is very funny. He says, Robin, uh, if you want to eat, there's, um, sausage there's and some peppers. peppers. He, no, he didn't say there was sausage and peppers. Right. He said, there's some the peppers, peppers in there, and there's lots of different kind of tomatoes. <laughs> well, the peppers were in the sausage and peppers, yeah. uh-huh. and the tomato was in the mozzarella. Yeah, I know. Artie really knows how to take care of his guests. <laughs> well, no, I mean, everybody else loved it, but I know, but Robin, I did. I picked the peppers. I had amazing pizza, <laughs> sausage and peppers, meatballs, bread. Sa- I mean, everybody loved it. Loved it, Artie, but, you know, what was there to drink at your party? Well, I had uh, vodka, beer on Where tap. Where was the vodka? There was vodka in the freezer. Nobody knew that. Artie stayed in the shower about two hours. Well, that was, <laughs> Why? Well, I, I had some company. <laughs> He's like half. Hey, did I get a, a word that you guys were in a helicopter firing off machine guns? Yes. You did? Did you fire on the enemy? No, no, no we just no. fired at the Howard. sand, but it was fucking, it was this, the most awesome is thing. Is there I've a ever... danger, like, that you guys could, like, hit some pedestrian or. Well, uh, Howard, you gotta see where we were. There's no pedestrians. <laughs> There's Howard, no one in the desert. It's fucking sand as far as the eye can you see. You can tell, you can tell. You know, okay, that's, believe me, there's two million stories. So just let me, you'll like this story. Nobody gets house. in trouble when you guys are firing off I don't know. Guns. I don't well, know. That... The, the helicopter pilot, okay, we're on a Black Hawk helicopter. There, right? right. Be- because, quite frankly, they said to us, look, <laughs> you know, you guys, we think you're funny and everything, but you're not, you know, like Robin Williams or Billy Crystal. You're going to places where, you know, they're, they're real remote bases. You're going to hell. We These went are- 145 miles north of Kandahar. Right. right. Like in the fucking desert. Like right. like anyone knows where the fuck Kandahar is right, anyway. Really? Right. So I, uh, so we fly in a military jet to Kand- uh, plane to Kandahar, which was an experience. And then they said, we do a show in Kandahar. Went really good. And then the next morning, this really great guy, Jeff Anthony, who's a Vietnam vet, and he was our USO guy, he says, all right, before we go to bed that night, he comes in with huge flap jackets, bulletproof vest helmets. He goes, all right, now tomorrow, you're going to need to put these on, so i got to show you how to put them around. <laughs> so, uh, of course, mine doesn't fit. It was so embarrassing. I have yeah. such a great picture of Artie. I saw it with his belly hanging out of yeah. his flap well, jacket. Is ne- it flack or flack? It's flack. Flack. flack jacket. We spent the whole week not correcting Artie. Right. <laughs> the next day, flap jacket. Flap jacket. Uh, Gary, Pancakes, <laughs> flapjacks. Yeah, uh, uh, all right. Look at Artie. There he is. There's military Artie. Yes. Afghan Artie. I should, uh, let me, I should have corrected Gary about a few things called jokes. But anyway. Flapjacks. So, by the way, they had, they had flapjacks there. They the, so I, but tell I, him I, how in the, you had to fly in the cockpit. I'm trying to. <laughs> all right. So... <laughs> So uh, the next morning, Gary's fits like a glove. The Apollo, you know, Florentine, you know, everybody. <laughs> this guy Jeff Anthony, not that, not that it means anything. He's a black guy, yeah. and uh, Vietnam vet. <laughs> and um, the next morning, I walk out, and uh, and he, clearly it doesn't fit. So I'm walking over to him, <laughs> and um, we're about to get on a Black Hawk helicopter. And it's so funny. He was the greatest guy, and he anticipated everything because he was a nom. He didn't care about anything. He before I say it doesn't fit, he sees me coming down the hall. He goes, "Brother, I'm way ahead of you. There's an extender in the back." Wow. <laughs> they got such a thing as an extender. Yeah, so he extended it, and and well, Nick was my roommate, so Nick had to put my my jacket on with the bulletproof vest, and then the helmet fit. Whatever. So, but this picture I'm looking at, the extender barely worked. I mean, your your belly is still yeah. Well, they, they can still yeah. shoot him in the belly. I wasn't. I yeah, was, you, like it, like how's that going to protect you? Just, you take a bullet in that belly over there. I don't. You know what? This point on and give a shit because uh, <laughs> where we had a shit every night was quite frankly I'd rather right. be dead. Right. <laughs> so um, is that right? Was the, was the I didn't conditions? think it was that bad. Yeah, well, Gary, you know you're not as classy. As no, me. no. I thought for, <laughs> for being in the middle of the desert, it makes shit. No, they, of, I thought the shitter was much nicer than I expected. Really? I'll tell you what. I said if the shitters that I have on the road in most of the cities were as nice, I'd be happier because the army, me and Gary were talking about this. The budget is so big, they go to these uh, you know deserts and they build a mini city. You know it's. Is the toilet worse than K-Rocks? You remember how bad it was? I, can I just... I, no, I, but I, I think it, they flew in the same pubic hair that was on K-Rocks' right. faucet for 20 yeah. years. 
Because when you get a thousand right, guys, quick, uh, quick questions and answers. Because you know we could be here all day. Well, right, so, so, yeah, so, so let me just tell. To, I, I, let me tell yeah. the uh, uh, the broad story is funny too at my house. But anyway, we did shoot the the gun. So I'll get to that right after this. Okay. I promise. So before Robin and and, and uh, Jim got there, I went upstairs and I'm taking a shower and I did take a long shower and it was a steam. And so I missed when they got there. So when I went down, they were they went out for one. I'm like, fuck, Robin came here. She's been here a while. I'm not even at the party, the host. So well, that, I don't, that I don't understand. Hey, can I, can I, you can, had people come into the house, and you were in the shower the whole time? Well, no, 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 no. no. I greeted every... There. That right. Robin was there. <laughs> Robin and Jim were there late. So right. I greeted everybody. And, uh, you know, I don't give a shit. I know these guys. I say, I got to go shower. I didn't shower yet. Just when people get here, tell them where the food is. I'm going to go shower. How, so can I, I jump in for a second? What do people do? They oh, swim, Christ. and they shower, and they... Yeah, I say, I say do it. I got an outdoor do shower. I said, do whatever the fuck you want. All right. So all I want to say is, Artie, because this, no, this gets it started. Artie hates you right now. I, no, oh. it's ending it. All right, fine. No, end go it. ahead. Say what it is, no. Garrett. I'm sure it's hilarious. Oh. Go. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Go ahead, Garrett. Well, you guys the short... each other? No, I, we <laughs> got a little great. I've seen a lot of Garrett lately. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot of Artie. No, go yeah. ahead, Garrett. I called Artie at noon to thank him for inviting me, and... I woke him up, and he goes, oh, my God, thank God you woke me up. Everyone's coming in 20 minutes. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. That was funny. So, anyway, I, I – um, I, <laughs> I'm glad you interrupted for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but uh, you wanted Gary in here. You uh, wanted him to – No, uh, for, for, the mil- he, for the military stories, yeah, we're going to need each other, but he wasn't even at the party. Oh. So, um, so, I miss Robin for that. So, I get out of the shower, and the girl, the, the girl Jessica, and the other girl are there – and um, I go downstairs, I spend some time with Robin, and I'm telling the Afghanistan stories about the pool and everything, and I'm trying to pick peppers out of the meat sauce. <laughs> and then about, I'm only with Robin now for about a half an hour. Right. And the girl comes up to me, and I, I thought she was staying all night. And she says, um, listen, uh, my friend's got to leave, and she's my ride. I got to leave in like a half an hour. And I'm like, oh. oh, I thought you were staying. She's like, no, I'm sorry. Where's she going, back to Pittsburgh? Uh, she had to go to New York, and then, yeah, something. She had to go to New York for a, a job. I don't. Oh. I won't say what she does for a living, but she right. had to go around. So. She goes, but, uh, you know, what Robin overheard. Yeah, I want to spend some time with you. I want to spend some wow. time with you. I want to. She goes, uh, you know, uh, she's not like a stripper or anything, but she goes, uh, I've been practicing like uh, like lap dancing and I want to I want to give you a lap dance. So oh, I said wow. a, pro- a private lap dance. So I'm like, you know what? Robin can handle herself. This is fine. <laughs> uh, the other girl really wasn't like into anybody, uh, but very nice. So I put her up in the man cave and let her have Hang fun. Out. and. You know, I mean, look, I wanted her to clap her hands so she wouldn't steal anything. <laughs> uh, and I go into my room with this girl, and she goes, oh, I want to give you a lap dance. So I shut all the shades, uh, but the door is a little ajar, and I'm on the third floor, and you can hear people, like, whatever, sort of talking on the pool. And she says, I, I need I need music. So I don't have a radio in there yet. She goes, I, so uh, now I'm, like, so fucking horny. I'm, I got the TV on. I got the digital cable. I'm trying to find a fucking music channel. Right. I'm like, oh, what, what, are you, what kind of music you like? She goes, and, and you know how these young girls, she's in her 20s. Why don't you have Teddy come up and sing? Well, yeah, really. He could have bumped his feet and That would have been, been romantic. So, uh, so anyway, um, I'm like, what kind of music do you like? And you know how these younger g- girls now, they know, th- like, there's so many different types of music, like, right. mixed Hip-hop, with other types. mixed with uh, jams, yeah. mashes. Right, Smash exactly. Ups or so she, Smash up. Yeah. Yeah. She goes, do you have any, like, uh, Mash hip-hop with a reggae rap? Do you have a Nas featuring Rihanna? Uh, you know, blankety blank MC fuckface. You know, and I'm like, I don't know. So I see, I see rock, I see classic rock. I, uh, finally, I get to a rap uh, thing, and it's a good sign because there's a Biggie Small song on. Right. And I really do like a lot of Biggie Small. I think that right. guy was a talented rapper. So I said, I could deal with this. She goes, this is fine. So I put it up, uh, you know, as loud as uh, I can without disturbing the guests to <laughs> have no food. And uh, she starts giving me a lap dance. Now, wow. again, now again I, I, I've been with the girl before. So. Right. So <laughs> so she uh, she gets dr- uh, undressed. See, that's hot. She's wearing like she's wearing like a thong. You know? Right. And a really nice bra. And she starts giving me a lap dance. And she's, like, trying to imitate strippers, like, what they do. But right. she was being real sort of, like, sensuous. Yes. And she, we couldn't do it on the bed. There was no leverage. So I brought a chair over. <laughs> right, by like the, a strip club. Right, exactly. So I put a chair over by the bed. Hmm. Now, um, 
I yeah. like that. I start like necking with her, and she wasn't stopping me. And uh, <laughs> and then I did the greatest move ever for a man my size. I sort of, I sort of, she came into me, and I sort of grabbed her, and I sort of just did like a roll onto the bed <laughs> from the chair. Yeah, oh. very nice. It was like Earl Monroe. You still have the move. I, I do. Uh, but the thing Good is, I you. I could have crushed her. <laughs> so we get on the bed, and I start making out with her. And uh, again, the girl, she's like twenty five. This girl. You know. So the the. The lap dance is over at this point. At this You've point, she it. said, well, well, she uh, said, look, I, you get the special treatment, so she took her bra off. Right. And uh, now I'm taking shit off, you know. Right. And, I'm, and at this point, I'm really, really upset that Robin had no wine. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, uh, but you do have to have wine at a party. Uh, yeah, right. I know. <laughs> I mean, not everyone drinks Jack Daniels. At a fag party, you got to. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I roll her over onto the bed. And her bra comes off. Right. And, uh, you know, I start kissing her. She doesn't stop me. And I take her, you know, panties off. One thing led to another. I don't know. I mean, you know, we... Right. we uh You made we, love. We uh, <laughs> we did what came naturally. And... Um, she uh, sounds like a great girl, actually. Yeah. Now, uh... Did one of your friends accidentally walk in on you? No, that would have been a great addition <laughs> John, well, that, that would be like a strip club. <laughs> John, yeah, right, exactly. If John Hine came in and started asking her, uh, you know, Happy Days trivia. so I. Uh, but I was handed a note that said you didn't get laid because, oh, maybe I, this will ruin the story. I don't know. What? Is this where you're ending up? That, that she was on her period? No, who said that? She announced she was on her period. Who no, said no, no, that? I didn't no, hear that. Didn't, that's what these what? guys are writing. No, she was not on her period. He was uh, there. He was away long <laughs> enough that they must have. She was not on her period. <laughs> she uh, she was fine. There was no, right. like... Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know why they're giving me that note. Everyone fucks me up. Go yeah. ahead. So, anyway, so yeah. I roll over on the bed, and, uh, you know, uh, one thing leads to another, and whatever. It's like, you know... But the door was ajar, okay? Yeah. So, I kind of hear everything. And now I always talk about like if Robin was laughing at oh, you naked, how would, how like, right. really embarrassing it would be. So while I'm lying there naked, I hear Robin laughing. <laughs> and, I'm there, and I'm sitting there going, oh my God, this is, is like outside the door. This is like living a nightmare. <laughs> and it's like, eh. you know what Robin's I like laughing. about this story? I don't know Artie's new girl, but She's not my new girl. We're not. We're, we're not. I don't know who this is, but I'm saying a girl. Oh, she easy, did. She, she, she really took care of Marty. Yeah, I'm saying, boy, you know, even if you've been with a girl and then she says, I'm going to give you a lap dance. Yeah. That's really yeah. hot. I think a lot of chicks now, because that's so public. Um, right. It's the big new thing. The, the yeah. stripper pole and the jazz. You know, they have those those classes. Where right. The aerobics classes. Oh, you can learn how to strip. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I... Uh, Look at you like half with the new house so and chicks running around well, let me and lap dances. You, after he had his, yeah. you know, fun... He basically threw everybody out. No, Did he really? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> She's Artie, gonna... you came down and you said, all right, let me give you a tour of the house. That's what I did. Yeah, I said, let me, how's that throwing you out? Hold it. He gives us a little tour of the house and then he looked at us and said, Aren't you going to leave? I did. You know what? Now, oh. now she's now she's lying. Wow. What are you guys going to do? Leave? Robin, you're lying. That's how I am. I have parties and I, I can't wait for everyone to go. Now Robin is outright lying. I mean, she's outright lying. She says she's say saying. That? I did not say that. Oh, you did too. No, no, I didn't. Everybody else had already gone. No, they didn't. Oh, my Robin's God. Robin's getting everything wrong. Does Robin wrong. stay too long at the fair? Do you know, do you know, the, do you know the website, robinswrong.com? Right. Uh, you're going to start blogging. I'm gonna, I got a bunch of entries. I'm going to get on my little fucking uh, Blackberry. So Robin, you this is how I felt to me. I, uh, he you was felt like, not so what welcome. are you guys going to do now, leave? <laughs> no, no, I did not say that. Party wanted to go back to bed and shower. <laughs> Some of my friends, uh, you know, maybe are, are racist. Maybe you were uncomfortable. I don't know. <laughs> no, but Artie did take another shower. That's what, well, you know, these showers last for- <laughs> Well, the girl was on her period anyway. <laughs> so you constantly showered. <laughs> Because when you're fat and it's, uh, you know. Yeah. Plus, I love the shower. I'm wow. telling you. I was. I wanted to write my book in the so shower. So the party was no wine, no... no. Artie's in the shower when you arrive. Right. And then Artie showers. <laughs> no, no. Some you more. got there late. And then he gets his lap dance. And then... <laughs> and then he throws you out. <laughs> you got there late. I said, Sorry, I this, missed it. This was the second funniest party I had ever been to. Yeah, well, it's a guy party, you know. You shouldn't it have was. been there. I said it was a song. Right. <laughs> People are in the pool enjoying it. Uh, I, I don't know where they are. We had a great time. Anyway, Len you're, on, Len, you're on the air in Brick, New Jersey. Hi, Len. Hey, I saw Robin on Friday pulling up to Artie's house. 
on her boat, and I saw her on the dock, and she was dressed in a uh, wetsuit. Do you a, wear a wetsuit? No, I wasn't wearing yeah, a wetsuit. How's wet it feel, Here's Robin? Someone's lying. Here's another one. A, flat, a flapjack. A flapjack. <laughs> she, hated, she hated it so much, it was over the next day. I couldn't get rid of her. So now she has a destination with that boat on Oh, my God, yeah. And it, 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 actually, Robin actually looked very good. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, she's she, lost a lot she, of weight. She had... She had these, these black short shorts on. Well, really? With ass yeah, and, and, and her, the captain of her boat, Dennis, is a real nice guy, like a guy's guy. You wore and, short shorts? Yeah. Wow. I'm Hot you. pants? No. Well, I don't know. How they short were, they are they? They were Daisy Dukes. Were they, were they, did the bottom of your ass hang out? No. That would be a Daisy Duke. Mm, right. I'm telling you, she, she looked fucking good. I mean, I, I'm, I'm she like... She's got to. she got a big man in her life. Yeah, I know, but I, I really... A lot of pressure there. I'm really happy that, you know, she said she was going through all that shit, like, nearly dying. You know, like I'm going through now. <laughs> and uh, But she rolls up in this boat. She's got this beautiful boat, you know. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it, Martin Luther King must love this. A white guy's driving her. <laughs> in a beautiful boat, and she's ordering him around. She's like, Dennis, park the boat there. <laughs> On the phone, you said something, though. You're running out of water. That means it was getting too shallow. Yeah, for you we to... were churning a little mud. Oh. The, you know, if you don't find the channel, we didn't know exactly where it was because there are no real markers. Yeah, sometimes I can't find the right channel, and I go into some mud toe. And so when, once we found the channel, we were pretty okay because we oh, were okay. afraid we couldn't get there. All right, All right Dominic Barber, you're on the air. Oh. Welcome back, everyone. When we get to Afghanistan, can we go right from the beginning? Well, I was trying to interview the boys about Afghanistan, but I don't know. It didn't go right, well. But right from the beginning, because we're all like bated breath. We've heard all sorts of stories that they were attacked. Right. All right, Dominic, I'll handle it. Dominic made the page, uh, the, the Russian Malloy article. Yeah, they but, quoted um, him. Anyway, uh, it, it was great having Robin. Yeah, it was you guys fun. Are a little and she bit... docked her boat, and I, I, I got on her boat, too, in the back. Just to, and this, and, I mean, my God, I don't know if you remember, there's a table back there, like, you know, I'm sounding like a Jersey jerk off, but <laughs> the boat had, like, a table on it. But you could sit there and have, like, a party of six people with drinks and it's beautiful and she she docked it right on my uh, perpendicular and i don't know i think me and robin are b- going to become an item i think I, wow. think so. I think i'll have to come pick up Artie. love the boat are and, you happy robin you have somewhere to go with your boat now dennis and i were so happy we didn't know what to do with ourselves yeah how long you did see, it take? robin bought a boat and has nowhere to go with it. i love getting on and, the boat and just going and she, but it was fun to go somewhere right you wanted change. a destination because i know people with boats and i don't get the whole boat thing right it's not something that interests you me. would never get a boat never not even a yacht or no, anything so i don't understand fun. i don't understand it it's just not me i'm not a boat guy once i'm on there i feel trapped right. and uh, i love them but yeah, and it's like, you know, you get on there, and I have friends like this, and they're like, oh, and they finally have a destination. Oh, my God. They're so happy. Like, they feel like they're Columbus, and they're going right, to go find exactly. a new world. And that was what it was like. We found Artie's house. Yeah, so now that Robin has somewhere to go, she's going to be at your house, like, every weekend. Her because... Ralph Zolar is going to be floating by. Yeah, I mean, no, because Robin now has, like, oh, I know. I'll drive over to Artie. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know what? You're right about that because when I was growing up, my uncle Frankie had a small boat, uh, a small uh, house on a lagoon. Right. And uh, he had a guy across the street from him that had a boat that had enough radar equipment to sail from here to Madrid. <laughs> and he would go up and down the lagoon and just wave high and then just yeah, right. he, he did nothing. No, there's nothing. It's That's endless right. water. Remember, well, Robin, remember yeah. the story when we went to, on Dominic's boat, we were going to the Mohegan Sun. Yes. Remember, we did that together. Right. And you seemed to enjoy that because I remember we were talking on the boat and it was kind I t- of fun. I tried to make the best of it, but I did not enjoy it. But I was telling Robin because Robin has that real cool thing where when you go down, there's like a bed. Bed and at the like sort of the uh, the bow. The, what is what's the it's front? It's in the bow. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, there's a cabin below, and you could lay yeah. down there. And I remember on the way back from the Mohegan Sun, I was tanked and I was trying to sober up by letting the wind hit me. And then Howard had enough, so he, him, and Richie Notar went downstairs. And about 20 minutes later, we go down here, and it was it was just a funny scene. Howard and Richie Notar are on that little bed bullshitting with each other, and it looked like pillow talk after that. That's funny. You went down like because, because it's I don't like the wind hitting me in the face every minute, so I went down there to relax. It was, I mean, all- and I can't talk when the fucking wind is in my <laughs> mouth, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm yelling to, some, and then it's just also futile. I, don't I, know. I agree because when I was talking I to it. you, I felt bad because I, I remember. Remember going to the Mohegan Sun. 
I do. I hate boats. I wish they never invented the boat. Oh well, Dominic, God, we wouldn't be here if they hadn't invented the boat. I first, wish the you know man is not meant to be on the water. Uh, first, Columbus <laughs> got here first on a boat. First of all, Should've taking a plane. <laughs> what an asshole. First of all, Dominic uh, almost killed the person on the boat right. that day. And then, but let me get let, let me stop you for a minute. Go ahead. People are curious, and Dominic brings up a good point. Okay, so you guys went to Afghanistan. We, we are now clarifying that it was not Iraq. Because for some reason, this was so top secret. Well, somebody could have been after them, right? All right. They, they wouldn't even oh, oh, <laughs> We did get bombed. I mean, did. shit, they were right. So, so anyway, the fact of the matter is we were asked. Artie came in one day and said to me, don't say we're going to Afghanistan. Say yes. we're going to Iraq. So that's why we said Iraq. All right. So how long did it take you to get there? Yeah, we started our trip in New York or Artie in New Jersey. <laughs> Eight and a half hours to Frankfurt, Germany. Right. right. Was that horrible? No, that was great. Cause it took a pill. It was overnight. That's great. Now, me and Jimmy are Jerseyites, so me and Jimmy left from Newark, and uh, uh, Dave Attell and uh, Gary and Nick DiPaolo all left from JFK. So the first leg, we weren't all together, but we landed in, we were supposed to land in Frankfurt, Germany. Anybody nervous? At the same at time. At this point, you no. were a little bit, uh, you, you had uh, some anxiety. You know, I got to say, Gary is a brave guy, because I, I, there were times I was very nervous, but Gary was... You never really see him that nervous about anything, and he, and he did a great job for Howard TV. He's got amazing footage, and he's not nervous because he looks like an Arab. <laughs> no, I, felt, I felt well protected. Yeah, I did. Yeah, the, the, the kids over, and I say kids, and I got a when we tell the story about when we were bombed, it'll prove it. They really do make you feel safe, man. Everybody's walking around like they have those PXs, like which is like a Seven right. Eleven with everything in it on. And you're waiting online with like uh, you know toothpaste or something, and the guy in front of you and a girl in back of you are casually waiting to pay with literally M16s loaded on their fucking yeah. shoulder. I mean, you know, and and when you're around them, you feel safe. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, so we go to Frankfurt. Um, our plane is late, so Artie and the USO guy and Jim go ahead to Istanbul. We get stuck. We miss a plane. We got to catch like the next plane. We get there. There's a four hour layover. Ooh. Suffice to say, then we from Istanbul, you go to Kyrgyzstan, Russia. I'd say that that whole trip with layovers and everything, probably around 20, 21 hours. Wow. I and mean, you're what, able to sleep. Well, you, you didn't get bored? Because I know you get easily no, bored. No, I didn't get bored. Did what you get magazines to read? I brought uh, DVDs to watch, magazines right. to read, books to read. Gary is well prepared for a play. Yeah. Yeah. He's like you. a chick. He's got a bag. So, no, so it's, Jim's <laughs> another one. Jim had 87 books and DVDs and everything. <laughs> so when I got to Istanbul, right. we walked. I went into the lounge and Artie... And the USO guy and Jim were all flat out sleeping. Do you have that picture? I do have a picture already on his back. You got to put it on the website. <laughs> okay. It's a funny picture because, you know, shirts riding up and everything. Then we my, all got to my belly looks like uh, my belly in this picture. We're in the Istanbul, Turkey business lounge. Wow. <laughs> I had just been flying for 18 hours. I fall asleep on the fucking couch and my gut is coming out of my skirt. The, uh, Gary or somebody snapped a picture. And my gut looked like Mount Everest. It what was are you going to so do? Are you going to go on a diet now? Is this a resolution? Hey, did you lose weight there? Because I already thought he must have lost, I lost at least 10. I lost 14 pounds. You did? Did you really? But this week, I, I probably put uh, about 11 or 12 back on. Wow. Easy. So, so, uh, so, so, but, but the, the key there. part about that is, this part is they were late. So when me and Jim got to Frankfurt, Germany, we were told to go to the business lounge in Frankfurt, Germany's uh, airport. And wait, so this is where we met Jeff Anthony, the USO guy, who's a, a, just a brilliant man and took care of us. And now it's just the three of us. He finds out they're late. So we have to make a connecting flight. Everything is based on, you know, connecting flights. Right. So now he's saying to me and Jimmy, look, with the time we're losing, because you're losing time going that way, mm -hmm. if they don't get to Frankfurt on time to catch this flight to Istanbul... They might as well maybe go back because uh, they're going to lose so much time. They might not make it because there's not a lot of flights. So he was saying to me and Jim that it might just be you two guys doing the stand up shows and the meet and greet and everything, which meant, you know, with the constraints on the material, which we'll talk about Would later, a little rough and, and whatever. Um, but me and Jimmy, you know, again, Jim was like, we're like manned up, like we'll do whatever we got to do. But it would have been so disappointing because DePaulo, uh, DePaulo and Attell are two of the greatest comedians ever. And, uh, you know, Gar did a great job emceeing. It was going to be hard. Not, they fought. But tell them what happened. You got on a plane somehow. And we, you got, got, we got it. We all got this. So we all get to Russia in the middle of the night. You know, I don't know. It's fucking four o'clock in the morning. Then we sleep. And everybody gets up at around, I don't know, <laughs> 10, 11 o'clock in the morning except for Artie. Right. So we get up, and the, the USO guy says, you know, 
I didn't realize that a huge part of this trip is meet and greets. And right. every second that you're not on stage, you're either eating with the soldiers, visiting with the soldiers. You know, it's 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 right. grueling, but it's 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 rewarding and interesting. So we're doing all this stuff. Artie's just sleeping away, sleeping away. We're <laughs> I had visiting, to catch with, up. Col- we're visiting with colonels and we're we're on planes and we're having a great time. Like we, we we went on some giant plane and Jim and I take a pictures, we're standing on the wing and we're having a great time. The show, the first show is at 6 o'clock that night. I think they woke Artie up at what? About 5? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with him? This, uh, well, I had flown so much, I get into the, we, we slept in barracks, okay? Right. Which were better than I thought. There were bunk beds. Did you sleep with soldiers? Like, I mean, are there other soldiers there? There were soldiers in the barracks, but not right. in our room. Right. So Where you, you took a bottom bunk, obviously. I, well, it was, it was, there were so four. You didn't take an upper bunk. There were four <laughs> bunk beds. <laughs> One night I did when I jerked off, because I only didn't want to sleep on the wet spot. But right. I, I, um... I, uh, the first, it was. It did was, you jerk off in Afghanistan? I did about three times. Did you really? Yeah, Howard, I gotta tell you, we. Audie jerked off. I gotta tell you something. I almost did too. We got on a plane to leave there. That's crazy. The, there was this chick, right, that worked, you know, was in the army, in a jumpsuit, hair pulled back. <laughs> she was on the military totally flight. Totally hot. Yeah. Like, really? completely, like, we all said, like, completely underrated, like, no makeup, smoking hot body, and. <laughs> Hardy kept asking her to get a water, and every time she got a water, she had it like bent down. <laughs> yeah, I can't. And this is on a military flight from Kyrgyzstan. No regular commercial flights. Where go. do you beat off though? If you're in a barracks. Well, I was. I was. Oh, you have your own room. Uh, you had no, your own room. Yeah, we no, all had our own room. I didn't for the first. Oh. The first two nights, I slept with Dave Attell and Nick DiPaolo. Oh, you oh. did? Yeah, and did I you like beat off when you're in the room with them. No, no, no. no I would right. never do that. <laughs> so I like it. That's gay. And I was sort of like I, I was the guy who organized it, and I was the headliner, which, right. by the way, was nerve wracking because. Thank God Gary came because he emceed and he did a really great job of making an announcement. So all we had to do when we got on stage was worry about the comedy because the other shit is hard. But when I realized that I had a headline and what I committed to, following Jimmy Florentine, DePaulo and Attell is a fucking hard thing to do, man. <laughs> yeah. And not everybody knew the show. The only reason I uh, DePaulo opens for me on the road is because I'm on your show. Right. Uh, the, in a regular situation, I'd be, you know, before him. So you were nervous that not everyone knew our show, and they were, you were like, oh, maybe I'm not good enough to be the headliner. Well, no, I'm a, I mean, look, I'm a professional comic, and I got a lot of material. I was fine. Right. But I'm just saying, I had the material, but... After after work. following yeah. guys that great, it's difficult. You want to come out and do well. Yeah, because as the I, the USO co, USO guy told me as the headliner, Gary will come out, do a few minutes, and then it's Jimmy does 15 to 20, uh, Nick DiPaolo does 15 to 20, Attell does 15 to 20, then I had to do like 30 to 35 minutes. Oh, wow. And that's like in the con, it was sort of not a contract, but that's what they want you to do because they want the soldiers to have a long show. And then afterwards, Gary makes the announcement and we go do a meet and greet, which everyone at the show comes, we sign pictures. And so- soldiers seem to like the show? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How- yeah. yeah. The, the, the first night, the guys were really worried about the restraints and everything. Go out there, there's like 400 guys. It's in this place called Pete's Tavern. It's named after a guy who died in 9 11. You look out there, there's 400 guys. You look at these guys with M16s, and the, the comedians just look out and they go, we're not fucking being... These guys are killing people. We have to tell clean jokes. So yeah. they didn't get filthy the first night, but they were like... No, did, no, we, we got filthy. They did their no, show. We, we got, listen, what happened was... <laughs> you I want to hear Gary doing stand-up. Uh, let's see, Gary Page 1. They, I they have it. some of Gary? Here's Gary. The MC? I'm telling you, he did well. Good. I'm happy for him. Let's see, Gary and Artie overseas. Okay, I don't know which one is which, but... Let me see. Maybe this is it. This is Gary on stage. Oh, that's Artie shooting the gun. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I went nuts. By the way, Artie went to shoot the gun, Howard, and he wouldn't let go of it. I turned into Rambo, man. Gary Page mm-hmm. 1 in gray. It's an orange, Howard. <laughs> gray why would you write gray? Really so no, far it was apart. originally gray, but there's four clips, so I highlighted that one in orange for you. Yeah, if there's four clips in gray and you tell me it's in gray, how would I know which one of the four it would be? What's our process? I highlighted the one in orange. <laughs> yeah, but you highlighted it in orange and said it was in gray. So why would... <laughs> Go back to your office, moron. The Sal system. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me just listen, because it's getting late. I want to I move this story. All right, story so I'll just, I'll just say that we were worried about the material, but the, the first night was the safest show we did, because it was on a military base that wasn't in danger. Nice. These are all guys on their way to danger, you know, right. so they're waiting. And um, 
there's about like like Gary said, four to five hundred guys in this place, which only held about three hundred. So it's standing room only, and not every tour gets that kind of a turnout. So the USO was really happy. Right. But all the chicks were really cool. Everybody was really cool and young. And uh, our guy unofficially, the USO guy unofficially said, "Look, just stay away from politics. You know, right. anything else, you know, test the waters and see what happens." Right. So um, Gary goes up and he does his thing. And the great thing, Howard, is too. And I left you this on the message. Um, it's not a, a, a people that are from some of the cities you might be more well known in. It's a lot of Southerners right, and stuff. Right. But man, when me and Gary walked in, they know your show. They love it. It was so great. All the soldiers went, and it was kind of touching. Like they saw Gary, they went Baba Booey. They were yelling out. Guys was they knew references. Like they said, Artie, you slept on the show, so you better be good for today. Oh. How do they know that? Well, I, the, some I guess they they know they wow. they must get tapes or something. So um and big uh, news over there when Artie falls asleep <laughs> yeah. on the show. So they all said yeah, that's uh, great. they said stuff like uh, Howard rules. We love Howard. Thanks for you know it really re- that's great. That was touching. you guys did a really great thing. That really. was touching, man. They yeah. they they love the show and they know that you're for them and they, and they dig right. that so much and they appreciate it so. We go backstage. Gary goes out and does his thing. Now, Jimmy, he's the guy who's got to test the waters. That's the problem. With he goes out first, guy. yeah. And, uh, you know, he does a couple of, you know, things. Like, all right. He's, but he's killing. He's doing really good. And then he starts hitting them with a couple of real dirty jokes. <laughs> and those are getting guffaws. Right, right. <laughs> so Jim has a great set. Now, Nick hears that. And, of Uh-oh. course, Nick's like, fuck this. I'm fucking just breaking every fucking. I don't give a fuck. These are soldiers. Fuck them all. Because we're like, we want to make the guys laugh. And right. the USO guy says, look, as long as they laugh, no one's yelling at you. Right. You know? right. Nick goes out. He's even, Nick is, I mean, he's even crazier. And um, he destroys David. Te- now I'm getting nervous because, oh, my God, everyone's destroying. Right. So Attell goes out. And they told us, this is an example of how we were getting around it, but being dirty. This is such a great Dave Attell joke. They said we couldn't do any jokes about masturbating, okay, which is retarded. Everyone does it over there, obviously. So Attell goes up and says, hey, listen, they told us we couldn't do any jokes about masturbating. So let me tell you a story about the time I was fucking a sock with shampoo in it. (laughs) 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 uh, Another thing Dave said that was great, he goes, Afghanistan, where have you? Afghanistan, where no one's allowed to have sex, but everybody smells like they just did. <laughs> so, <laughs> ah, that's a good one. So um, I, I go up now, and uh, thank God a lot of them knew me, but a lot of them didn't. And um, Howard, man, everything was just hitting. We were killing. And I, I saw him. I was allowed to do stuff. I did a, a full, like, what did I do? About 30 minutes that first day. 30, 35, like, yeah. Right, okay. So I did my obligation, but... By the end, I was doing shit like I—I I don't know if I do in Brooklyn at midnight. Wow. <laughs> it was all killing, and we just—I mean, I said, look, I didn't bring any comic who's political, you know. And none right. of us are like liberals. Oh, no one give a fuck about that. And um, you know, at the end, I was doing the, the one people that did take a hit was if there were any gay soldiers because we all did gay. Stuff. <laughs> really, really heavy uh, gay stuff. You know, so yeah. funny. Listen, the, listen, all the American soldiers. Did you guys see sixty minutes last night about the gay soldiers? Yeah, that's a repeat. Yeah, that was. Interesting. Yeah, it was really good. Oh. It's, I, I feel bad for gay soldiers. Like these guys are, you know, unbelievable, risking their lives, and they still can't. And they want to be soldiers. That guy's yeah. the greatest medic in the world. They kicked him out. Yeah, they kicked him they out kicked for being gay. Out? Yeah, for being gay. It was just really it's fucked up. Man. That is uh, that. Yeah. I, I thought if you're gay, you, if, if you're gay, they throw you out of the army. I thought you they were allowed that? to be in no, the No, don't ask, don't tell, but you this guy told Oh, you have yeah. to stay in the closet. But right. lately, oh. they're, they're realizing there's so many good gay dudes in the army, they don't want to kick them out, you know, so they're like, they're kind of, they, they try to convince everyone that they're not gay. Isn't that <laughs> unbelievable? Even with, nowadays, yeah. marriage, like, gay guys w- want to fight and help the country. Why would you not let them? But anyway. Well, you can see, because some of these old generals are like, that's going to destroy morale because, uh, right. you know, but they're already there. They're there. And no morale is being destroyed. Well, Stop being stupid. Uh, yeah, it's stupid. But what they love, what what the American soldiers love doing is making fun of the French soldiers because the French soldiers, um, what is What's that? Wait, what's going what on? Noise? I left the thing open in my office. Oh, <laughs> Sal. Oh, Sal. Yeah, Sal, right. Sal went into Gary's. Like you can hear me right now, right? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. The Sal system. <laughs> so, um, Sal leaves the button down in Gary's office. Sal, <laughs> Sal's already fucking up. Uh, but the big thing. They all the American soldiers love making fun of the French soldiers because the French soldiers wear 
because it's hot, these short shorts hype. that are rolled up, like hyped up, and they really look, you know, fruity. <laughs> so um, while I was uh, while I was doing a show, uh, one of them like walked by where like some of the guys could see it. So I said, when the guy left, I said, I guess they do let gay guys in the army, and the place the place went crazy. And I said, why aren't we flighting the French? We'd be done in a week. You guys. <laughs> I said, what do those guys do? Do they? Uh, do they? Uh, uh, you Wait, know, I was just handed a note um, that the guys wanted to play cards at your house, but you didn't have any cards. I didn't have a deck of cards. Yeah, <laughs> I thought I did. I thought the man you got the room, and you don't have the cards. I thought the man cave people left cards. <laughs> they had chips and everything else, and they didn't leave cards. Who, who's writing these notes? Because I'm telling you right now, I'm going to use them for crab bait. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, so when right, I so get back to at this. the end, I, when I, but to, just to prove how by the end of the first show we were so off the fucking material thing. At the end, I said, "What are the you know?" I was doing like, "What are the friends?" guys do to help you do they do they distract the taliban by letting them fuck them in the ass and you guys go, so i was bent over like as a french guy going okay he's fucking me go go get the <laughs> drop a bomb and while i'm over there like just they're guffaw so the french guys don't get to come to the uso they show. don't speak any english right and uh you know so by the end of it we were all we were comfortable and at the end of the show the uso guy said that was amazing they loved it Gary did a great job. Everybody did a How great job. How long were you in Afghanistan? So wait, so, so this was Kurzgesagt. Okay. okay. How many days were you in we, Afghanistan? So, I mean, whatever. They, 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 you know. Okay. So that was, okay, three I'll, days. I'll, I'll tell you. Three, that was three, the end of that show. All right. right? So the, then we do a meet and greet. The next day we have to get up and take a military flight. Now we're going to Afghanistan. The first show was sort of the safer show, right. and our USO guy says, "As uh, the next couple, the next one's going to be a little more dangerous. It's in Kandahar. It's an outdoor show, and then we're getting on the Blackhawks, and you're going to a real dangerous place." So the next morning we wake up in Kazakhstan, get on this military flight with the hot, that the hot chick was on, and we fly to. Afghanistan. So, Gary, you, you, yeah, when you talk about the travel was grueling, we were supposed to leave in the morning. They tell us at 10 o'clock at night. We were just getting ready to have All a right, beer. Yeah. And they go, listen, plans have changed. Plans change every minute. We're now leaving at 2 o'clock in the morning to go to Kandahar. Oh. <laughs> so we just stayed up on it. Jim and Florentine and I fell asleep on chairs. And we flew at 2 in the morning, got to Kandahar at like 5 in the morning. And that's fucking hot. That was like 125. Wow. And it's sooty. It's, um, it's almost like they took rocks and pulverized them. So it's just that dust is in the air. We go, you know, again... We go to sleep. We get up at around, I don't know, about about noon. Artie continues to sleep. We go. Do, we met the colonel. Uh, he's the headliner. You know what? The, you know what the drones are, Howard. The predator. It's a yeah, plane. Yeah. plane. I think, yeah. we, the colonel who's in charge of that. Enormous fan of the show. He really was. We sit down. The first question he asks, he goes, "Okay, what's going on with the merger?" And Jim, when I last left, you were dating Robin. Are you guys more serious now? Like a really big. So fan I of. said to Gary, I said, "If he's that big of a fan, he knows I'm sleeping. What does he give right. a shit?" But the thing was about what Gary said about. Our flight, they said, look, it's a military flight, so you're supposed to leave at 10. We didn't leave till 4 a.m. because it's so, like in show business in America, everybody gets their ass kissed. Over there, in times of war, we're so low on the totem pole. Right. When a plane comes, if we don't fit, we don't go. Right. We wait. And literally, it's not just soldiers. Like, if there's only enough room for two boxes of toilet paper or us, the toilet paper's going. Yeah. Right. And so we missed like five to flights to Kandahar. Right. They, right. And uh, so we kept waiting and waiting. Finally, had room for us, and they had f just enough seats in the front of this. In you know, like in, a, in um in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the the, the back of that ship cl comes down like a big ramp. Yeah, that's what this military flight looked like. That's how you load in and out, and they put a ladder on the side. This thing was as big as like the George Washington Bridge, and they had six seats for us right in the front. And Garrett took a great shot of this. He had it on me, and then he panned up, and behind us four, like, you know, scared-looking comics in the front were about 500 Marines, all baby-faced, ready to go. They got six, and the women, too, they carry 60 pounds So, so what is this beer. I heard? You had a mortar attack, and you guys right, had so to be, I'll, so I'll get yeah. to, I get to, yeah, we're, we're we get to, so, we get to Kandahar, we do the show, right. 6 o'clock that night, show goes great, except, um, you know, there's a, I won't get into it. We do the show, we finish the show. We're going to get in the car, go to the meet and greet. We get in the car. We drive, I don't know, 200 yards, and the sirens go. No, wait, you forget. Again, the, here's the thing. In Kandahar, before we left Kyrgyzstan, they said, listen, you're going to Kandahar. And we said, yeah. And all these southern soldiers said, listen, man, this place is paradise. Yeah. He goes, Kandahar mm. tastes like shit. 
Right. I said, what do you mean? He goes, when you breathe, you breathe shit. There's a shit pond. No kidding. A shit pond that is basically open sewage in the middle of, like, right off the base. Oh, my God. And at about 6 o'clock at night, right when our show was starting, when the wind kicks up, Oof. Howard, a wind hits you that is, is like, you shit. feel like you're every time you bite, you're biting into shit. And it's so grotesque. If you're not used to it, it really hits you bad. And our show was outside. So, again... All these guys, some of these guys had come from just doing hand-to-hand combat with the Taliban. Wow. And they fucking came and sat and were just, you know, with a cigarette and just wanting to laugh. And, oh, um, my God. And in the middle, in the middle of this, uh, in the middle of our show, the shit wind comes. Oh. Okay? So, so like, I'm backstage. Nick was on stage when it happened. And I'm, like, ready to throw up. The Marines are laughing at me, like, tastes good, don't it, are? I'm like, you know, and because uh, they're used to it. Um, and uh, Nick a is, horrible country. Nick is uh, on stage. No, this is the, the shit pond is our fault. That's what the military built. It's a sewage treatment plant, but they built it too close to where everybody is. Uh-huh. Right, and uh, so two, uh, the Romanian soldiers they make fun of them because they do the craziest stuff. And this is a true story. Two Romanian soldiers, one of them bet the other that he couldn't swim through the shit pond. Oh. Oh. Okay, like a hundred bucks. And the and and the uh, the, uh, the Americans love telling the story. Going, yeah, those Romanian fuckers. The guy fucking stopped in the middle and was almost. Drown and the other guy had to get him and <laughs> and uh, like I mean like and I asked is that true they said yeah definitely so the shit is the one good thing about it is it gave us endless material like you right. could look at the lights and in the lights at night you could see you know you see particles you that's realize shit. all that's those particles matter. are shit yes. that you're breathing in Ugh. and you know it gave us jokes like like I said it you know um. It feels like we're in heaven's toilet. Can someone tell God to light a match after he shits? And uh, so, so what? Wait, wait. Let me get you on so, track. So, so, so now what I'm on track. I'm telling you, right. we do the show there, okay? Yeah, yeah. And we get done with that show in shit stench. Right. Now we have to go to a meet and greet. All right. right? Yeah. To go to the meet and greet is about not even a half a mile away. We all get in these SUVs and these Hummers, okay? And about twenty yards into it, and the article in Russian Malloy was accurate here. A siren goes off, hmm. and and you hear we're under attack. Um- Bruce and I'm here today to challenge my dog Buster against Artie in an eating contest, and I got 500 bucks that says this dog is going to eat a slice much quicker than Artie. Why are you so confident? This dog is the biggest gavone you've ever seen. This dog could eat like crazy. And the reason I'm also doing this, not only for the 500 bucks, but I'm going to get a plug for a great product. So that's what this is all about. It's all about business, and it's all about my dog taking Artie to the cleaners. You get him, buddy. I'm moments away from my big uh, pizza pie eating contest with the dog. Um... Right now, the dog is the favorite. The smart money is on the dog. The dog is favored by two pieces of crust. And I think uh, the smart money would be on me because while I might not beat the dog, I think I can cover. I think it'll be close. I've eaten a lot of slices. I'm better when I'm drunk. But, uh, you know, and I'm not drunk this morning. I'm just a little lit. So uh, it's going to be close, and I'm looking forward to a, a fun day on the show. Are you prepared anyway? Uh... No, I don't prepare in any way. I just, uh, I'm always prepared to eat pizza. Uh, when you see me and I don't have a slice of pizza, I'm trying not to eat a slice of pizza. It's all willpower. And I'm hungry today and uh, I'm ready to go. Buster, you gonna win? Speak to me. What? Speak. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> This guy's been trying to get on the show for a long time. He's tried to figure out every way to get a free plug. But all right, he came up with something interesting. He says his dog eats really fast, and his dog could eat a piece of pizza faster than Artie. Artie goes, I don't know if I could beat a dog, but he'll give it a shot. He will try. Wouldn't the challenge be that I would say I could do it? I mean, you would assume the dog could do it faster. I would assume a dog could eat faster than you. Yeah. Well, your prowess is known, and so this guy thought... His dog should chat. I think it'll be funny just to watch you eat a piece of pizza. I mean, I don't like to eat like a gavone in public, but yeah, I'll do it. Anybody who could eat three cheesesteaks in a matter of minutes, surely. It was four. Bruce is going to put up 500 bucks. I guess Artie gets the 500. 500 big ones. 
He says his dog can eat a slice of pizza. Artie Faster moving into Artie. position. <laughs> I told this guy, Bruce, he could have a plug for his Hello, Howard. dumb product. If um, <laughs> What do you mean, dumb product? It's a dumb product. It's a horrible there. way to start the interview. Well, we'll see if it's dumb or not. Oh, okay. what kind of dog is that? It's dog. a corgi, Welsh corgi. Welsh corgi. I see a lot of those on the street. Yeah, They're very strange dog. dogs. They're long. Oh, yeah. that dog, that's like a fruit dog. I'm going to hey, kill it. Oh. I know. <laughs> now, Artie, you see the dog's legs used to be long. He ate his own legs off. That's how hungry the dog is. Oh, my is. God. <laughs> so, I don't All right, know, your dog eats fast? Dog eats fast. That's uh, a good-looking dog. All right, if your dog can beat Artie, I'll give you a plug. All right, that's what we're here for. And I got 500 large, and I have some extra action. I got some action with Ronnie outside, and anybody yep. else who wants some more action, I got cash. Artie, by the way, doesn't know that he can beat a dog in I mean, terms yeah, of eating. I, I didn't really uh, ask for this, but I'm willing to try it. What's the dog's name? The dog's name is Buster. Buster. Yes. I want to interview the dog, but he won't talk. Yeah, he'll talk. Buster looks like he is hungry. He is. He, he's <laughs> wondering, where the hell is How, Howard, I haven't fed him in three weeks. Is that true? No, no. I, I didn't feed him last he'll night. He'll eat Artie. You didn't feed him last night? Yeah. I think Buster's hungry. All right. Now, you can't help Buster. The only advantage Artie has is that he can hold his oh, slice. Okay. Can we <laughs> fold the slice as well? Artie's folding the slice. You can fold the slice. Yeah. If the dog Doug, you fold it. the slice. Don't give it to the dog to fold. <laughs> Wait a minute. If the dog could fold the slice, let him fold it. I'm a human being, and this is the advantage I have. I'm folding. That's right? Artie's advantage. The dog should be able right, to beat Artie. Wait, yeah, they're not holding you the You can't use your the hands, then, if the dog can't fold yes, the slice. Yes, he can. <laughs> He's a, right, your right, dog right. can use his hands. All right, you know what? I have complete confidence in All right. There's no problem here. On your mark, get set. Hold on. Look at him. He's ready to go. Go! go While Artie's eating fast, uh -oh. the dog is oh, flying. Is flying <laughs> but the dog is having trouble gripping the pizza. Well, that's what I was afraid of. Right. Artie is slamming it in. Uh-oh. Don't choke, Artie. Come on, Buster! Don't Buster, hurt. Buster's way ahead. Buster's halfway done with the pizza. But he's having trouble grabbing the pizza. Artie is about... Uh -oh. I'd say Artie's at half. a big hunk. <clears throat> Wait, Buster's now... Oh, oh Buster's God. got the pizza out of the dish. No. And he's eating it off the floor. Oh, Wait a second. He's using his paw. Oh, that's a smart dog. That's a smart dog. He's holding it down. Look at Artie's your mouth is full. Artie's mouth is full. Buster is complete. Buster is, I'd say. Come on, Buster. Buster still has the crust. Artie still has Come some on, more of his Buster. pizza. Artie has a quarter of his pizza. Buster just has the crust. Oh, Buster with the crust. Artie, you gotta swallow. Doug has a microphone on Buster. Come on, Buster, go. Buster's still eating. I can't see what's going on. He has his back turned to me. I think he only has He's got a little piece crust. left. It's on his last piece and it's mouth chewing. Artie, hurry. <laughs> the dog. Artie. <laughs> Artie will never make it. Artie's almost there. Artie has a little piece He's left. It's done. All right, the corgi's done. The, uh, the corgi's done. <laughs> I belched. <laughs> that was you? <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't Artie, no. <laughs> Artie. Artie's got a what bowl full of pizza. What is him? Um are you sick? Good boy, Buster. <laughs> he wants Buster wants another slice. I'm not sick, but <laughs> look at how much I have left. I was almost there, man. <laughs> yeah, but there's a lot in your mouth. Buster's you, done. You have to swallow, Artie. The Give your crust swallow. to Buster. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, buddy. There you go, Buster. <laughs> Buster's out of his mind hungry. These guys must have starved this I dog. Yes, that poor baby. Yeah. Cute dog. Nice dog. I needed my Hawaiian punch. I forgot to take the Hawaiian punch over here. Yeah. I, I don't think he had time for that. But it would have helped me. Now, well, all right. Burgers. I mean, we can go down that road, too, for another five. No, I think a burger would be a no burger. contest. Yeah, 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 burger, you're right. right. All right. <laughs> I, I, we, Artie, you lost the hands advantage when Buster pulled the food out of the bowl and put his paw on it. Yeah, I didn't see him do smart that. Dog. Yeah, smart. Yeah, he knows how to eat. Mm. He's no dummy. Artie, He's eating the plate right now. Buster's the perfect date for you. <laughs> Him. He's looking at me. He's eyeballing what's in your mouth. Actually, he could go for another couple of slices, right? Look at him. Sure. <laughs> he could. Actually, so could I. <laughs> Double or nothing, Artie. Yeah. What kind of burger you got? Uh, Artie wants to do the burger challenge. Artie doesn't care if he wins or loses. Hey, can we see who could drink a jack of water quicker? <laughs> so, Bruce, I'm going to let you plug your product, Shrinkterine. I even said I'd let you do your jingle. Give him the Shrinkterine jingle. <laughs> First of all. I'm sorry. This is a band called that. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven. Sing the ring. Makes you tingle. Feel so clean. Oh, sing the ring. Please your sphincter and what's between. Oh, hey. What'd you pay for that? <laughs> Nothing. That's my uh, band, the Dead Beatles. The uh, Shrinkterine. Product, how much money have you invested in it so far, would you uh, say? Probably about 20 grand. 
And how much have you made? Uh, I probably have tripled that in, in just about uh, six months, nine really? months. Yeah. You say you invented shrinkerine because a chick was giving you oral and you had swamp ass? Yeah, that's basically it, Howard. Yeah, uh, bad experience. And my girlfriend, who's in the green room right now, uh, was in a spontaneous mood and she caught me at a bad time. Is and your girlfriend good looking? Yeah, she's cute. Yeah. yeah. So well, let me talk to her. I want to know what swamp ass smells like. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm not sure she's going to want to do this. What? Describe swamp ass? Well, she could describe swamp ass, but I'm not sure she wants to go on the air. So you, when you develop a product, are you a chemist that you would know yes. how to do it? You I'm are. A, I'm a chemist. I develop products for a natural product company. And um, and so you decided to branch out on your own. Yeah. Oh, there's your girlfriend. She is cute. Oh, thank you. Hey, so, Kat, sorry about that. So you were giving this animal oral, and you said, man, you've got swamp ass? Was that how it went down? Actually, no. I went close for oral. How close? About nine inches away, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, And, and you, you just said... not get any closer. And you said, oh my God, you stink. <laughs> what happened? Had you gone to the bathroom that day and not yeah, showered? it was like the end of the day. And and, and Kat <coughs> is a, a spontaneous woman and uh, she just caught me with my pants down. Okay, oh. and uh, you're hot, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> What are you doing with a guy with swamp ass? Hey, it, was, it was a one-shot deal. Honey, before I bang you, I'd take a, a nice shower. You would? Yeah, I sure would. Oh, that'd be nice. Well, yeah. See, so, I, I go beyond that. Now I sphincterine before I bang her. Talk about sphincterine. So you developed this product, and yes. let's say I go to the bathroom, and well, I don't feel fresh. You were talking recently about uh, when you go to the bathroom, you use toilet paper with water on it. This product is really excellent for that particular situation you have. What is it, a spray bottle or a cream? It's a liquid, and it also comes in towelettes. So what you got is something that you, the liquid you apply to toilet paper as you would water as you once see. on the air, and you put it on its all natural ingredients. Is it like a alcohol. baby wipe? It's like a baby wipe, but those wipes are loaded with chemicals and bad ingredients. This is all natural, and it feels good. And, uh, I, you know, I'm going to let Kat talk about another uh, purpose. Thanks. Uh, cat, cat uses... Dude, I don't know if I want an infomercial. Well, 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 you know what? No, no, I mean, Howard, you, your cool. dog was probably going to beat Artie anyway. Yeah. Uh, the bottom line is that Cat uses it on the front as well. Really? Yeah. No problems using that? It doesn't, uh, oh, no. doesn't affect you in any way? Actually, the, but it has a nice effect. It, Are you uh, proud to be going out with a yeah. shrinkterine inventor? <laughs> Do you tell your friends? Yeah. Uh, some of them, they think it's funny. And when you use it on your front there, it won't attract bugs? <laughs> no. All right, that's Howard, it. I'm going to let Kat tell you about the rest of this product. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my girlfriend. Uh, there's some exciting shrinkery news. No, this is well, exciting. the new toilet. Yeah, all right. Actually, you know what? I'm, I have 500 bucks in my pocket, and I would love for Robin to uh, try the product. I'd give her five. All right, listen. Oh. Enough of you already. <laughs> well, can I get my website? Go ahead, real quick. It's uh, mintyass.com. Yeah. <laughs> this maniac, he, um, he took a picture of Mariah Carey, and he uses Adobe Photoshop, and he had her holding shrinkery. Oh, like you're it's, kidding. Uh, yeah. And so her manager immediately called. Uh, right. I don't know how he knew. Yeah. But he got word and said, you know, dude, you got to pay somebody to endorse something. And right. Mariah Carey doesn't do shrinkter ads. <laughs> And then, she um, does now. <laughs> and then, and then Mariah Carey called you herself, yeah. right? Well, I, you know, they, she said it was Mariah Carey, and it certainly sounded like her. And uh, she yelled at me and said, you know, how dare you? My, you know, my fans are going to think I have a dirty bottom. But, and, I, and I said, it's not for dirty bottom; it's for more than that. Do you think it was really Mariah Carey, Robin, that called him? And I doubt it. Coward! I mean, she was as nutty as those uh, those really? commercials that you put on. No her. kidding. Yeah, she was nutty, and it sounded like her, and she was yelling at me, and she was pretty irate. All right, so it's mintyass.com. Um, Bruce. It's and also, uh, it's available at Ricky's in New York. And all right, all right, all right. Now, on, you, earned, you got enough of a plug. Get <laughs> out of here. Yeah, all right. That was yeah. way more than Thank 500. you, Howard. This and, has been uh, a pleasure. And thank you to the dog, whatever his name is, Buster. Buster. And Zane, thank you. You know, I felt no support when I had a mouthful of half a slice, and I hear Robin go, come on, Buster. Well, Buster was so <laughs> cute. Buster is cute. I'm not cute. <laughs> the shrink the ring dude's girlfriend's cute, too. Yeah. Well, all right. He's doing a lot better than I thought he'd be doing. Maybe I would invite, invent an ass product. <laughs> I got a clean ass, and she right. digs that. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Howard. Okay. All right, so he's got like a baby bye wipe bye. type concept yes. going there. Schwinkterine. Who knows? One day he might sell that to one of the big companies like Procter & Gamble. Hey, maybe we'll all be using it one day. Bruce. Yeah. It was close, but Buster won. Buster won, and I'm very proud of him. The $500 dog. I, I, I didn't think it was going to be a, like a question, but uh, towards the end, already started coming on strong. I was a little worried, but $500 later, I got my plugs in, and Buster, my man. You got beat by a dog. I know. Well, I mean, I got beat by a dog eating a slice of pizza. Who's going to win that? Uh, you know, I enjoyed the pizza, but the dog ate it quicker. What are you going to do? I certainly, uh, I don't feel ashamed. 
I think some buddies of mine might stop talking to me because they feel uh, I should be able to eat mozzarella at a quicker pace than a dog, but what do they know? Uh, I'm happy with my performance. I really am. You still got to eat pizza. Yeah, I got to eat pizza, and then I had a second slice. They got uh, two full sla uh, pies up here, and then some hamburgers from McDonald's. And uh, there's never a buffet up here, so I single-handedly got a buffet up here because of the dog challenge. I never challenged the dog. The dog challenged me. So It was close, though. It was closer than pe it Wasn't it close? Doug, one of the big producers here? I put my money on you, and I lost 20 bucks. You put money I, on I put money on you, yeah. <laughs> well, that's funny. That was worth it for that.